It's Saturday, October 3rd, 2020. I'm Todd Dunn, and today I'm aboard my 1936 wooden powerboat Tortuga for one of my last times aboard this year. And why am I here today? Well, as you can hear, the engine is running. Yeah, I'm warming the engine up to do my annual end of the season oil change. Yesterday I came aboard and winterized the water system and the head, which is pretty straightforward, so I didn't bother to film it. And today I'm going to change the oil and filter, which is also pretty straightforward, as you'll see, and it doesn't really take that long. But as a start for it, I'm going to run the engine for about 30 minutes, and then shut her down, let her sit for five, for all the oil to drain down into the pan when it's nice and warm, and uh, then we will uh, take the oil, old oil out, take the old filter off, put a new filter on, and put new oil in, and we'll be ready to go after I briefly test run the engine to make sure the oil level is correct. So, I've got about 25 minutes to go for the engine to warm up, and then I'll be uh, ready to start to work. Now getting ready to change the oil is pretty easy. I've warmed the engine up now. And I'm going to pull the dipstick and set it aside. That's just to, so I won't create a partial vacuum. And we'll open the fill. Again, for the same reason, to allow air in when we're taking oil out. Okay, now that we've got it opened up so air can go in, as the oil drains out, I have to drain the oil out. Now this engine is very low in the boat and it would be impossible to get underneath it to just pull the pan drain plug and drain the oil into something. But fortunately, instead of a drain plug, the engine has a tube plumbed into the drain plug fitting. And it's right down here, a little hard to get to, but it's got a rubber cap on it that you pull off. And once that rubber cap is off, I have here an electric oil change pump, which will just pump the oil out. So I'm just going to wipe off the hose here a little, just to make it a little easier to handle, and fit this over the end of the tube down in here. I see this has got. So this is pretty straightforward. It's just a little tricky to get it onto this tube because of where the tube is located. And I want to slide it on enough that it isn't just going to pop off because that would put oil into the bilge. <laughs> I should probably use a slightly less beefy hose for this. Ah, it's still not on. Because this is a fuel hose and it's pretty heavy duty. But it's what I had. And that slid on a little bit. There we go, I think. Yeah, that should be good. Now, we just hook the electrical connections up, the battery, and turn the pump on. It's pretty straightforward. This hasn't been used since last year, so it's a little tangled up, but basically not too difficult. So we'll put the negative connection on, and the positive connection and flip the switch in the direction I want the oil to go, which is this way, and it's going to pump the oil out of the engine. The oil's nice and warm, so it shouldn't take long.
That's done. I spilled a little oil, but not much. Clean that up. And when you're finished, the end of the hose goes into a hole up here so it won't drip oil everywhere. Okay, now we'll disconnect the uh, battery from there. And we're finished with this. And I can put the rubber cap back on the drain tube. This is pretty straightforward. Just have to put it down here and stick it back on without dropping it into the bilge. And there we go. So I've already put the dipstick back in, so at this point I'm ready to remove the oil filter. Now, as is the case with many uh, engines, the oil filter is mounted horizontally. It screws in horizontally. And when you take it off, it is going to leak some oil out. So I'm going to put an oil sorbent cloth underneath the oil filter to catch anything that leaks out. So that hopefully I won't end up with a bunch of oil in the bilge. Now the next step is to take the oil filter out now that I've got that oil sorbent cloth in there. So what I'm going to do is just put this filter wrench on and give it a little bit of a turn. The problem here is that because of where this filter is, it's difficult to get any leverage on it and too much. Oh, wait. Well, good. Just loosened right up. So that went pretty well. Now we'll unscrew it and some oil will leak out, which is why I put that oil sorbent rag underneath. There we go. And we'll take it out of here. And I will drain the oil that's left in it into a uh, cup and pour it into my oil pump out. Okay, here's the new oil filter. It's a Volvo Penta oil filter. Surprisingly, they're not much more expensive than uh, the generic ones. I think these are about $14 and the generic ones run around. 12 or 13, so I've just gone with Volvo Penta. What I'm going to do right now is just dab a little new oil onto the uh, on my finger here, a little new oil on the gasket. That's pretty straightforward there. Now, in case I inadvertently knock this over, now I'm using Shell Rotella. T uh, 15W40, which is the oil I always use. Okay, just get this oil off my hand and we'll reach down in there and wipe off the mating face where the oil filter goes. And any oil that spilled out of it onto the engine block that it'll be hard to get to after. The filter is on. Now the filter is because of where things are, it's kind of hard to do. Ah. I'm gonna have to change hands to get at this. And of course I don't want to put my hands on top of the engine because it is hot. So we'll get this on here, start screwing it on. The only trick really is getting it lined up and getting it started. There we go. Now I just screw it on and when it gets on there, snug up against the mating surface, I will wipe it off again to get any oil on it off and wipe my hand off and then snug it up hand tight. And 
because if you go too tight, these things are almost impossible to get off. <clears throat> okay, she's in there. I can pull this oil sorbent rag out, and you can see the oil that leaked out, which is why I put this in, to keep oil out of the bilge. Even though I do have a bilge pan under the engine with more oil sorbent rags in it. So that is done. I'll just make sure that's tight. And there we go. Okay, pouring the new oil in can be a little tricky just because, again, I've got to pour it and hopefully not spill it. So what I usually do to cut down on a chance of spilling the oil is I take an oil absorbent rag like this, I tear a hole in it, and I put it up here like that. And that hopefully will catch any spillage and keep it off the rest of the engine. So here's my first gallon. I'm expecting this to take about five quarts. Now the engine's still nice and warm, so this oil should go in easily. And what I will do is fill it to the fill line on the dipstick, and then we will run the engine briefly to distribute the oil and get it into the filter. There we go. First gallon is in. So now I'm going to see what the it's reading on my dipstick. And right now we're reading about half a quart down. So I will put about half a quart, maybe a little bit more in there from my second gallon of oil. And then we will run the engine a little bit to distribute the oil around uh, any engine and to fill the filter back up. And when that's done, we will shut down, wait a couple minutes, check the oil again, and top it up to full. And we'll let it drain down for a minute or so to uh, make sure all the oil is drained down into the pan so we'll get a good reading of the amount of oil we have left. While I'm doing that, I'll tidy up a little bit. Okay, let's add a couple minutes for the oil to drain down. Well, I'll put my catch rag back on in case I spill some more and we'll top this up after we check it. Right there. Okay, here we go. Back in. And she's down about a cup. So I'll just put a tiny bit in and we'll be set. Hard to get into this spot. That should do it. I'll let that drain down for a minute. Check the oil again. 
and I think we're going to be good. Shouldn't take too long. It's good. A little more will probably drain down and it'll be just exactly where I want it. So this can come off, go into my trash bag, put the fill cap back on. And oil change is finished. Well, on the way home, I ran into some vagabonds. Hi. This is Billy and Sierra from, darn, I blank on your, on your, your YouTube page. Tula's Endless Summer. Tula's Endless Summer. It's a real, real shock, because <laughs> last picture I saw of them, they were in Florida. That's it. And that yeah. was like two days ago. <laughs> the internet's so, usually a little far behind, so we're, we're enjoying Maine, that's for sure. Yeah, well. It was great to meet you guys. And you too. Nice to meet you. Yeah, guys. and uh, I'll put this on my YouTube channel oh. tonight. <laughs> What's it called? What's it called? Well, that finishes the annual ritual of the oil change. It takes about 35, 40 minutes altogether, uh, not including the engine run to get the engine warmed up so the oil drains out easily. It's relatively simple. The only trick is that. Uh, some of the things are a little hard to uh, reach because of just the way the engine is in the boat. For example, the oil filter uh, is underneath some of the fuel fittings and it's quite uh, difficult to reach and get a hold of and particularly if you're using a filter wrench to take it off, you can only turn it about a sixteenth of a turn at a time with the filter wrench before the wrench hits something which uh, makes it a little bit more time consuming than it would be otherwise. But it's not a difficult process and uh, other than being a little awkward in places, it's pretty straightforward. And definitely worth it because many, many years ago I had my engine winterized uh, by a boatyard and which is, they run non-toxic antifreeze through the, cool, through the raw water cooling system which literally takes about a minute and uh, then they uh, do the oil change and they also change the fuel filter and that was about it and I think they charged me three hundred and fifty dollars and altogether that's about an hour's work now I don't change the engine fuel filter every year I have uh, two Raycor filters ahead of that fuel filter and I do change those annually and I usually do that in the spring and they're very simple you just take the top off the uh, Raycor housing pull the old filter element out put the new one in and snug the top back down and those are on the other side of this forward bulkhead and down below so they're very easy to use so anyway that's that uh, Hope you enjoyed seeing me suffer through another oil change aboard Tortuga. And uh, if you did, give me a thumbs up. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell so you will be notified when my next exciting video is. Okay, thanks for watching.